In this lesson, I'm going to show you how you can set up roles and permissions to give a little more control into who has access to what parts of your system. First of all, let's go into setup and then users and roles, and then we're going to click on manage roles. And now that we're in there, we can see that there's all these different types of roles that have different permissions assigned to them. And these permissions are different access to certain records, and you can assign access to view, edit, create, or full access to certain parts of the system. An example is if I go into lists, accounting, and items, some people may have full access to do whatever they want to the items. Some may be only able to create a new item, or view an item, or edit an item. Now let's go into an example. We can look at accountant. And then the accountant has a name, an ID, and there's some other checkboxes that you can look into a little bit more in detail on Sweet Answers if you'd like. But the main thing that we're going to look at is the permissions. So you can see that there's transactions, reports, lists, setup, custom records, and permissions for all these different parts of the software. Under transactions, you can see that this accountant has access to deposit, deposit application, invoicing, approval, sales order, things that just make sense for the accountant. And in the reporting, there's also other types of reports that the accountant can access. Things like taxes, inventory, net worth. And under lists, there are accounts and items. And it looks like this one only has the level of access is only edit items. The accountant role would only be able to edit items and not create them as well. Under setup, there are certain things that they only have access to. Accounting lists, management, deleted records, mobile device. So if you go under setup, accounting, this is what it's talking about, having access to this tab right here. If there was a custom record that you created that maybe hosts like key codes or something like that, you can also assign permissions to anything custom that you add to your system as well. Now let's go back into the different roles again. Let's say that you didn't like the permissions for this accountant and you needed to customize it. Well, you could click customize and as soon as you click that, it copies the accountant role with the exact permissions so that you can edit it from there. Let's say that I want to call this the new accountant role and you can assign an ID if you'd like. For this accountant, you don't want them to have access to invoicing or invoicing approval and you want them to for sales order you want them to have full access for sales orders and then you could save this role and you'd notice that there is a new role under here if i look at new i believe it's new accountant role right here you could view it you could edit it even further if you clicked this one this is the native one because it says customize next to it so that you can never change the native role but you can always customize it and create a copy of it and then assign it from there. Let's say I have an employee that is assigned this accountant role, but I want to make sure that they only have this new accountant role assigned to them and they don't have any other access. Now I'm gonna go into the employee record and we're gonna go into one of them right now. Oh, this sample one is fine. I'm gonna click edit and we're gonna give this person access to only that new accountant role. I'm gonna select give access. From this drop down. I can select this new accountant role and there it is right there. So now this person only has access to those permissions in that role we just created. You can also stack them so they can have multiple different types of access and that would just expand their abilities on what they can do if this person became a bookkeeper to make sure they've got all the bookkeeping things they need. Or if this person has multiple roles, it is also the chief people officer. Uh, for my circumstance, I actually know that I have already used up a lot of my access points, so it's going to give me an error that says all my full access licenses are zero, so I'd have to contact my account manager. But now let's go look at some of the other things in this user roles. We can manage our users. And under the manage users, you can see a lot of the different users that you may have coming through even your Sweet Commerce website and the types of permissions they have. The next thing we're going to do is go look at an audit trail of the login audit trail. So we can go over here and go view login audit trail. And let's look at all the times that I've logged in and get a little bit more information about that. So I'm going to look up my employee record. And I'm just going to search Caleb, and there it is, done, and submit. And you can see all the times that I had logged into the account. 
and I could sort this date to see the most recent, uh, even today, that this role, this user, this email address, and the IP address, and whether it was a successful login or not, when I first created my account way back here, I had some failures. So I wasn't able to log in. Maybe, um, maybe a reset password happened, and then there was a failure that would have occurred. And you can look into the failures a little bit more in the system information on the record to see when a password reset may have occurred. Finally, the last thing I'm going to show you is with the show role differences. What this is going to do is give you a little bit more of an understanding on the differences between one role and another one. So it just sets it up into a list so you can have a line by line comparison. And I want to select AP clerk and the base role I'm comparing it with is going to be let's say an engineer and I'm going to say show and you can see that there's all the different types of categories like lists up here or reports or transactions and the permission for that and then the engineer role or the AP clerk what type of access do they have for instance lists accounts payable register engineer has none access and an AP clerk has an edit and you can go through each one of these to make sure that your employees are given the appropriate permissions to only give them access to the parts of the software that really are applicable to them. And it does two things. It makes it so that more information is private. And in addition to that, it makes it so that your employees are only given access to the spots of the software that are really even applicable to them in the first place. And it's a lot easier to manage and to understand the system when instead of having a bunch of different drop downs, there's a limited amount that is really only applicable to them. So it makes it a little bit better for the user experience as well and your employees. Let's summarize what we've learned here. You have an employee record, you have roles and permissions. A role can be assigned to the employee record to give certain employees access to parts of the software. A role will have different permissions to have different access levels like view, edit, create, and full. And you can compare roles side by side to help with your audit process.